A young man playing a trumpet. It could be a glimpse inside a typical suburban home, but nothing about Joshua Grant is typical, going back to before he was even born. I was laying there and the girl said, oh, I see it's a boy, we see the little turtle. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah. And then she went, mm. It was very low, like it wasn't dramatic, it was like a mm. Mm -hmm. Tuberous sclerosis. Two words Cheryl Grant had never heard two words that would change the course of her life and that of her son. Tuberous sclerosis affects the brain, the eyes, the lungs, the heart, the kidneys. So it's a lot of different organ systems that could be affected. The rare genetic disorder that affects 50,000 people in the United States causes benign tumors and masses called tubers to grow in the brain and other vital organs. Joshua's brain has many tubers, but also had a giant cell astrocytoma tumor, a type associated with tuberous sclerosis. So if this is the size of a five-year-old brain, the tumor was half that size. It was gigantic. The surgery to remove part of that tumor dramatically impacted the left side of Joshua's body and his cognitive function. He's a probably about along the lines of a 15-year-old, 14, 15-year-old. Uh, sometimes, like if someone asks me a question, even if it's a yes or no question, it still take me a while to answer because I have a cognitive delay. Joshua works at the cafeteria of a nearby elementary school, using the stronger half of his body to compensate for the half that struggles with basic tasks. Biggest thing is, you have to make sure that this thing doesn't become your God. You will use it as an excuse for everything if you let it. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Emory neuro-oncologist Dr. Soma Sengupta manages Joshua's disorder. Harsh chemotherapy and invasive brain surgeries have been replaced for the most part mm -hmm. with drugs that now target specific pathways, keeping the tumors in check. Can you show me the hand again? Okay. It's kind of, like I said, it's kind of tense right now. Mm -hmm. Botox helps to loosen his hand and the left side of Joshua's body, but there are many tubers in his brain that cannot be removed. You have a triangle uh, where it's just kind of bright and brighter than it should be, and when that's disrupted, that's a, an area of, uh, of injury or, or abnormal tissue there. And you'll kind of see other areas throughout where uh, they're scattered throughout. I, I mean, it's hard to, to give like an accurate estimate, of, but I would say it's more than 10. And pro probably many more than that even. Compared to normal brain, this is very abnormal. I mean, there's large regions of the brain which are, are completely different than they would look in a normal brain in uh, someone like you or I. There is an area of Joshua's brain that is interesting to his doctors. It's the part not ravaged by surgery and genetic disorders. Music and language and auditory processing are kind of in similar in similar parts of the brain. And uh, then a lot of that is done through the, the lower parts of the frontal lobe, so like down here, in which his brain is relatively normal in, in that area. The first time I noticed was um, he was in his car seat and he was humming. And I was like, I didn't know babies hummed, you know. <laughs> in a life filled with valleys, this 22-year-old has found his peak. Joshua Grant is a jazz artist with his mouth, with his one hand, with all of himself. Well, music
music does for me is it helps me forget about my frustrations. I feel kind of like an outcast. So does music make you not feel like an outcast? It does. He wants to bring jazz to millennials. You know how you're in traffic, you're at a red light, and there's that one person. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> things of that nature. But uh, I want to put that with jazz music to see what it sounds like. His musical ability provides an unlikely soundtrack in a life filled with love and struggle and an unknown future where life-shortening complications often lurk. This is like a surprise, because you don't know what you're unwrapping. In between her two jobs, Cheryl unpacks boxes in their oh, new home. I love this picture of you. Look at that red clay dirt down home. You are so happy. I wouldn't change anything. It's made me a better person. Like, it's made me a more sober-minded person. It's made me more strategic, like I think more now globally. I see the value that everybody brings to the table now that I have this child, even my own self-worth. And I think it's just made me just a better person. He has the best outlook of anybody I know and does not complain. And he's, you know, I raised him, but he's so much better than I am, and I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not near as petty as I am. <laughs> Tuberous sclerosis stole a lot of dreams. His mother says music brought them back. Oh, I want him happy. I, you know, I just picture him somewhere in France playing music and meeting people and having a home of his own. In a world that has not always welcomed him because of his differences, Joshua does not yearn for a different path he wants to give back. I hope that whatever I attend, intend to accomplish, it be for not only for my good, but for the good of people besides myself, you know? Because what, what good will it do if it's just benefiting myself and nobody else? I'm just glad to be living. It's the little things that flourish into big things. Medical interventions control his tumors, but Joshua and his mother also have a positive outlook. And they have not had an easy life, but they're grateful, even for the hard parts, a lesson we'd all do well to remember.